Now that we know that Amazing Digital Circus is going to continue with future episodes, like we didn't already know that with almost 300 million views on the pilot, but it has been officially confirmed that there will be future episodes of Amazing Digital Circus and they're being worked on now, I went looking for theories. I went to MatPat's channel and then I realized it's not a game. This is also MatPat's channel and they have two videos that I completely missed on Amazing Digital Circus. I am going to subscribe right now, like the video, and find out why they are lying to us. Let's see what you got for us. Come on, blow our minds, let's go. Oh, this is kind of cool. Whoa, this is like cursed Amazing Digital Circus. There is no escape, ever. Oh, poor Pommy. Hello, Internet. What? Welcome to Come Film on. Theory, the show that will be theorizing day after day after day after day after day, <laughs> and we don't know why. Let's talk about the amazing digital circus, okay. shall we? You, yeah. my friend, stumbled into an incredible world of wonders where anything can happen, except I mean, that's for true. swearing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. In case you aren't <laughs> caught up with this one, this is the latest series from the creative geniuses over at Glitch Productions. Yep. This one was written, produced, and directed by Gooseworks, right. a talented artist who also composed music for both Has Been Hotel and hell of a boss and their creativity and experience really come through with this one i gotta say you guys went crazy recommending this one to us ah. across comments gt live and our subreddit and it's pretty darn easy to see why between the amazing animation gifable moments and incredible cast of characters and a storyline wrapped up in like 18 different layers of mystery this is the perfect show for us to dive into which means okay. that if you haven't watched the first full episode yet I have well, do it a watch few it after times this so i'd be surprised if you hadn't because this thing already has like 30 million views across no the no no Almost 300 well million. But just <laughs> but so yeah. we're all on the same page for today's theories, the yep. pilot follows a woman named Pomni, who's thrust into a okay. strange digital world. I mean, she's definitely female. I don't know how old she is. Alongside five yeah. other humans. Jax, the lovable humans? jerk, Lagisa, the sweet optimist. What are you talking about humans? Who can't hide her emotions. Zubal, who's made out of a bunch of random objects. And Kinger, who's been trapped there the longest and has I'm gone scared. kind of crazy yeah. as a result. The whole circus is run by a ringleader named Kane, who, according yep. to the show's website, is a, quote, wacky AI. And all of the humans are just subject AI. to every women desire. God sooks you're right, Jax. We should have a brand new adventure for our new member, Pomni. You said that like five minutes ago. However, <laughs> humans don't necessarily want to go on these adventures. They're not they're constantly really trying to find ways of getting human, out. This has they? even driven some of them I mean, insane. I guess in them the way that Pomni is. Where they but... devolve into monsters. Case in yep. point, the clown Kofmo was obsessed with finding the exit, the exit. and yep. abstracts just before Pomni shows up. Oh, yep. Kofmo's been abstracted. It's okay. What? Is that? And yet, even when Pomni does get herself yep. to the exit in this mm -hmm. pilot episode, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just endless hallways and office spaces repeating. Well, I mean, basically the back rooms. Yeah, yeah, As it, it turns out, Kane yeah. made this fake exit, hoping to give the humans what they wanted. He just didn't know what to put on the other side. I mm. do have to apologize mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. lying about the exit. <laughs> I was having so much trouble figuring out what to put on the other side, and oh, I never really th thought about it that way. And more okay. or less, that's where we leave the colorful cast of the Amazing Digital Circus after this first episode. Episode. Now, already there's just so much world building here for us yeah. to dig into. So many questions posed that we want the answers to. Like, okay. who's behind the amazing digital circus? Is there yeah, an Kane, actual way out, or, or are they just trapped forever? Are characters question. like Kofmo really gone, or can they be brought back in we some way? And uh, sorry to say, yet, I but... don't have a whole lot of answers for those things. Not yet. For as much as Glitch <laughs> and Goose <Great>. works <laughs> back into the first episode, All they've right, done well, the that's the end. and not given us a whole lot of answers. But I do think they've given us plenty here to theorize about. So, okay. here are three amazing digital circus theories. Don't right. run for the exit doors yet, my friends. We're going in. Let's start things off a bit small scale here. Okay. Theory number one, everything in the show is literally a video game set in the late 1990s. Why the 90s? Now, I don't know. I don't know. In just what, this one episode that paints this what as a makes video you game. Think 90s? For example, right at the I mean, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah part total. Show, okay, and that could be 90s. Old school PC like N64. Yeah, 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 exactly. This is yep. further driven home in a secret video that you can find if you go to wackywatch.com. A URL what? shown on screen during oh, the episode. Oh, yeah, I have seen that. shows us the main menu for this game. Game. We also That's see a flower true. pot fall to the ground and clip forgot into about it, that. like an old school source engine glitch. Kane mentions that he created the digital world in the weird backrooms office area in a way that's very similar to how a game developer would create world spaces. Plus, when Pomni first enters the world, she says this. I put on some weird headset and yep. now I'm Exactly. Here. Again. And this is why I thought that this was going to be covered on game theory. And I was wondering why he hadn't done it yet. But I get it now because it wasn't a game. But it is a game. He just said... 
okay. correctly implying that the whole thing is a game. She put on mm -hmm. a VR headset and yep. was transported into the world of the digital circus. Right. All of that checks out and should be pretty darn obvious to the casual viewer. But not but 90s. We didn't have VR headsets the in the 90s. This is set in the late 1990s and not but, the present day, like you might expect okay. from something talking about using VR headsets. Exactly. And there is a lot of circumstantial evidence that points us to this conclusion. Okay. First of all, basically all the tech that we see throughout the series seems to be pulling straight from the 90s. Anytime really? we see a computer in the show, it's always the white boxy styled ah, CRT monitors and large white okay. computer towers reminiscent of models made by companies like Dell and Gateway back in the 90s and early 2000s. Yep. And this is both in the actual episode and in the off-site material as well. In that Fair. same Wacky Watch commercial, we see a real-life computer with the same old-school design. What's more, the beginning of this Wacky Watch video says that this was an old tape recovered on a date that's censored. And given the degradation on that tape, it implies that not only is this video old, but it was also recovered in the past as well. But this okay. goes beyond just the tech that's used in the series. Many of the characters and iconography from the show are very reminiscent of popular characters well, and ideas yeah, like from the and, late 90s yeah. and early 2000s. Poppy's I don't know. gesture design takes a lot of cues from Sega's old Knights in the Dream series. Jack uh, shares okay. design inspiration and a similar name with Max, the rabbit, from the Sam and Max games. Bubble okay. clearly takes cues from Super <laughs> yeah, Mario's Mario. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, 100%. Jack and Gangle were both inspired by characters like Poppy the Performer, an old Japanese 3D animated series, that while Kane and the Digital looking. Circus set up. very reminiscent of the villain and plot of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, a short story what? by Harlan the? Ellison adapted what are you? into a point-and-click adventure game in 1995. Anyway, no you slice it, it's very clear that the creators want the show He's to have the He's got nice nothing but mouth! <laughs> we're also nostalgic for right now. But you might be thinking, hold on, they're talking about VR headsets here. That's a yeah, modern yeah, 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 thing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Wouldn't right, this thing right. just be inspired by the 1990s rather yeah. than set in yep. the 1990s? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a pretty good call-out. A lot of advances Oculus in virtual Death reality kid. technology yep, have only uh, been made uh, yeah, across the last yeah, decade, especially three, when yeah. you're talking about gaming. That doesn't mean that VR technology didn't exist back in the 1990s. And I'm not just talking about the rudimentary black and red wire frames of the Virtual, virtual boy. boy. Back in 1991, <laughs> Sega announced the Sega VR. In 1993, they, Virtual what? Reality created the Mega Visor display. And in 1995, Fort Technology hit us with the VFX One headset, just to name a few. And okay, I'm sure he's right, and I'm sure sure he's researched this. But I was alive during this entire time. I don't remember any of these. Well, I don't know. They're probably expensive, and I couldn't afford it. But if I could have, I would have bought these things if I knew about them. I have like every VR headset there is. Looking anyway. at the old footage of all these things, it doesn't look too dissimilar to the sort of world that we see in the amazing digital this circus. Was, oh Simple man, this would have been crazy in the 90s. Shapes and polygons. There's not a lot of detail here, but that's for good reason. You, these headsets, they couldn't handle a lot of detail. Whoa, True story, I actually looks have like some an electric chair, dude. These rudimentary headsets. The Great that thing is Lake massive. In Cleveland, Ohio actually had a special exhibit on VR technology in its basement when I was a kid, and it blew my mind. With the amount of wires and cables these things took Look to at run, that. Thing. It, it looks like so heavy. It looks like it's gonna electrocute him. Seriously. On it looks like a torture device. Sudden, you were dropped into a video game. It was simple. I was walking through a purple field with a bunch of green triangular mountains in the background, but it was effective, and it captured my imagination for decades since. So much so that even though it was a five-minute experience that happened in my life like two decades ago, I still, still remember. remember it vividly to this very day. Anyway, Mad okay. Cat childhood stories aside, the long and short of all of this, everything that we see in the series is pointing to this taking place in the past and not in the present. All of this has already happened from our perspective. We're just watching the events of the game unfold. So now that we know that we're in a 1990s video game, here, <laughs> I like let's it. Take the cart, deeper, yeah, nice. Theory number two: Pomni okay. helped create this hell simulation that they're currently stuck in. She created, but she joined so it. It already that? existed well, before. Things. Firstly, one I of the like. scenes that really jumped out to me while I was watching and rewatching the pilot was the sequence where Pomni's running through the back rooms on the other side of the exit door. At one point, she enters a more traditional-looking office space with computers and cubicles okay. before stopping and staring at one desk in particular. This is played as a big moment. We linger on this shot for a long time. And the there's, the, there's the headset. The zoom hits both the desk and Pomni I saw it. she has herself a psychological break. The lights start to flicker and she cackles uncomfortably before running on. The whole thing is yeah. really menacing Wait, and look, off the headset is right there. meant to leave us with a big impression. Why? I well, didn't because realize this desk it. isn't just some simulation it's that her desk. Up in the back rooms. It's based on a real place in the real world of this universe outside of the simulation. A place that we actually see in the episode. At the very end, right before the credits roll, we zoom out of the circus and through the void, revealing that all of this has been taking place inside of a computer. That makes uh -huh. sense. We've already established that this right here is a big old I mean, simulation. But yeah, yeah, take a look at the computer and the desk. It's the, the exact same, same one. setup that we saw earlier in the episode in the back room. Scene. I the did not notice that. That is 100%, dude. Right, the same retro 100%. keyboard and computer tower and speakers. The same oh, yeah. VR headset and headphones. This is exactly the same. But clearly this one's in the real world. Not only have we literally zoomed out of the computer, implying that we're no longer in said simulation, but the light 
lighting in the scene is much more natural. It's warmer. Sunlight is streaming through right. the nearby window. It's not all at in an the angle game. It's the not the simulated version. The it's this real. This is not the flat computer simulation lighting that we've been seeing throughout the rest of the episode. That right there, the desk and computer setup existing both in the simulation and in the real world is already a pretty interesting point, but why then would it break Pomni? What causes her to go off the deep end and start laughing? Well, I think that subconsciously, Pomni recognizes that this, this is her desk. At the beginning of the episode, yeah, they yeah, make she does. Pomni yeah. has yeah, lost yeah, yeah. her human memories. But this, I believe, is triggering a deep realization inside of her. Based on what we're given here, I believe that Pomni's human persona is an employee at CNA, the company developing the digital circus game and oh, VR headset. And seeing it here inside yeah. the game unlocks some weird flash of her memory as to what's happening to get her into the situation. She's trapped in the very game that she helped to create. It's ironic, hence why But she wouldn't laughs. she remember it's creating it's the game? Funny. I can see this being a huge reveal down the line, and one that could be potentially devastating for all the rest of our characters. For Pomni, obviously, but also for all the other characters who are trapped in here who would be seeing her as the one to blame for their current <laughs> Look how big they got. Also, real quick super short micro theory. I don't think we have enough information to figure out what the initials in the company name C and, C and A stand a. for, but mm. one possibility that did jump out to me, it could potentially stand for Cain and Abel, partially named after the AI Whoa, going the biblical. Cain, which could then lead itself to a lot of interesting story possibilities. You see, Cain and Abel are a pair of oh, brothers geez. who are the sons of Adam and oh, Eve. Oh jeez, here Cain we go. Oh, yep. killing his brother and creating the first ever murder in the world. Anyway, you know how we love Great. ourselves a good <laughs> biblical reference here, and I just wanted to mention it in case we get more clues in future episodes. But something we do have more than enough to say about I like the number blues three, clues, all paw. the characters <laughs> aren't actually humans trapped inside the digital circus. Okay, yeah, Instead, I, I don't they're think they're all that... digital copies of the brains of humans who've put on these headsets. Cloned and then forced into the simulation. Now this is a pretty big swing. I mean, Pomni's first but she, line of the but series But when they zoomed out, they zoomed oh, no, out of the screen. I'm a human screen, put on a headset and now I'm trapped here. It and didn't have her sitting at that desk. My, my. It appears a new human has entered this realm. Human. He calls, he her, calls her human. human. And that yeah, does, actually lines right. up with what we've seen with the official synopsis. Explicitly calling Pomni and the others human. Oh, in contrast to Kane okay, being I didn't, AI. Yeah, Quote okay. from that synopsis. A woman gets trapped in a crazy a virtual woman. world yeah, a woman along with is a five human, other yeah. humans and are yeah, now subject to the whims okay. of wacky AI and their own personal traumas. Plus, I just personally like the image of a bunch of people strapped into these VR headsets <laughs> a la Sword Art Online. But all of that being said, I believe that there's a lot of evidence pointing towards these characters being computerized clones rather than actual I, humans. Well, For okay. instance, as I mentioned above, Pomni starts going a bit crazy when she sees her desk from the real world in the okay, circus's back right. rooms. But think, what was actually on that desk? A headset. Pretty yeah, clearly it's not a being headset worn by that her. is not on any yeah. human's head. And mm -hmm. that's not just a thing in the simulation, it's, it's also real on the world. desk that's in the real what? world yep, too that exactly. we see in the final okay. shot of the pilot. If there's a human trapped in the digital circus here with a headset firmly planted on their head that they can't get yeah, off, they would just they, be there you in the know, shot. Be stuck there with the headset on their head. Given the little that we have to go off of right now, it makes more sense that Pomni put on the headset, had her consciousness copied into the game, and then she just took off the headset to go home. Meanwhile, Pomni in the game can't take it off because she's not a flesh and blood human yep, anymore. Yep, yep, she's yep. a digital copy whose memories begin like the moment severance. the headset was put on. And even if we're wrong and this desk isn't Pomni's, all the other characters went through this exact same process when they first joined, as Jax hinted at when he sarcastically said, How do I take this headset off? Just keep grabbing at it. That works for all of us. <laughs> they all tried the exact same thing, and it didn't work for any of them. They're all digital copies grasping at a VR I gotta rewatch this thing, man, because I forgot you know all of it. I'm gonna rewatch really it after this. Really convinced me of this theory. The mannequins. Yeah. Did you notice yeah, these guys? Yeah. All throughout the episode, we see several artist mannequins populating the circus. You know, these are the things that artists will sometimes yeah, buy yeah. to help them get references for poses. Most prominently, we see them in the restaurant with Kane and Bubble acting as background characters. But why would they matter? Well, we know that Kane can create NPCs. Kane Kane, is this one of your NPCs or is this a new sucker? So maybe these mannequins are just random, nameless characters that Kane made up to fill in the circus. Maybe, but that just doesn't sit right with me. First off, the dolls are clearly capable of emotion. Yeah. We see one get upset when Pomni interrupts it taking a bath, silently screaming at Pomni until she slams the door. There's something more going on here than just these things being background extras. Take a look at this. When Ragatha is showing Pomni to her room, there are yeah. several other doors for with other X's. characters in the background. This yes. is actually a great piece There's of world building. With an we X. see that each of the current characters have themselves their own rooms, as well as several other characters that we haven't met yet. There's this colorful one that I can't quite make out, what and looks to be a pinkish though. purple goo but monster, it's also some sort of cute doggo, I don't know if we're gonna meet them. Guy, a black queen chess piece that I'm gonna guess is Queenie. Maybe Queenie seems to be Kinger's counterpart, yeah. implying that he didn't come into the simulation alone. Regardless, all of these portraits have giant red X's over them. Uh -huh. That checks out. These are likely characters that have abstracted in the past, just like Kofmo did. We even see other abstracted creatures in the cellar when 
when Kane oh, banishes Kaufman. Yeah, anyway, along with these past and current characters, we also see several doors with blank mannequins on them. Not just yep. one, but multiple doors. True. Try to guess what's going on here. When a new human enters the game, holders. these rooms transform into one yep. that's appropriate for them. And the mannequin on the door transforms into their character. And what's more, I believe that there's a mannequin in the game that also transforms into that character. Right yep. now, they're placeholders, but they get molded into these I'll human copies yeah. whenever someone new puts on the headset and their brain gets scanned into the system. That would fit thematically with the idea of the mannequins to begin with. They're supposed to be used as references and then turned into something real when you're using them for your artwork. That would right. also fit with that the fact makes that they're on the doors of yeah, all these okay. empty rooms and the characters being scanned clones of human brains would fit the fact that they can't take off their headsets despite us seeing a headset not being worn at a desk that is clearly meant to be right. Pomni's. Okay. It just all fits with what we've seen from the series so far. In short, the series is gaslighting so there's It isn't stuck about a bunch forever. of humans trapped there's no in a exit. simulation. It's about a bunch of human consciousnesses that have been scanned into an AI system and then mapped onto blank mannequin bodies, where the computer can then simulate their human behavior and push their buttons to the breaking point, learning the weaknesses of the human psyche. And then, when they've had too much and abstract out of the system, well, then you just boot up another new simulation and try again. There is no exit Wait, door, try just uh, an endless yeah. loop of torturous tests run by Kane as he tries to understand the human experience. Just like a real circus, all of it is just a big performance. But that's not all. We have another 15 minutes or so of Amazing Digital Circus Theory. Well, let's see them expand upon what they just told us. Oh, and well, hello there. Welcome, Hi. welcome. Yeah. Please come in. I know this might not be what you were expecting, but you and I... We're going to go on so many adventures. Mm -hmm. We're going to have so much fun. Forever and ever and yeah. ever. And I yeah, ever that's the thing. I don't think that ever. any of them can ever escape. <laughs> Based on what we saw in the last one, I, I do agree with him that Hello, Internet. Welcome to <laughs> Film gonna. Theory, the show that's here to show you the most jaw-dropping, heart-stopping, uh, mind-bending theories you can imagine. Okay. In case you missed our last theory on the Amazing no, no, no. Circus, we, I literally the just watched it. Is that we it, believe like, that the circus here isn't ago. exactly what it appears to be. Instead okay. of some futuristic, fully immersive experience, we believe that it's actually a VR video game from the 1990s, one that copies the brains of anyone who puts on the headset. It then turns that copy into a digital character to go on adventures throughout the circus. So the people trapped in this world looking for an exit, they're Aren't not actually, actually people. people, just yeah. digital copies of their consciousnesses, their yep. personalities. Okay, so That's at least I understood the last video. Stations of VR headsets <laughs> in the first episode, but with no one actually wearing the headsets. And our theories didn't stop there. We continued by saying that Pomni is either the creator of the game or an employee at the development yep. studio okay. making the game, as evidenced by our mental breakdown when seeing yep. those work desks. And while yep. this is the direction that I still believe the series is headed for, how about we talk about something else? Okay. Okay, there's still good a idea. Ton Let's to talk about some more. here with the digital circus. Well, sure, those initial theories are the ones that I think are the most likely and the most intentional. It's once to stretch a bit further out that some of the truly fun, wacky <laughs> ideas really start to develop. Are they right? That's like Ginger yeah, right there. Not. Are they interesting and fun? Absolutely. And okay. therein lies the beauty of theory crafting. For example, last time I briefly tossed out a bit of wild speculation that the digital circus may have itself yeah, some Kate biblical connections. <laughs> In this brief scene exploring the back rooms of the company who seemingly created the circus. Circus, we see the initials C and A painted onto the wall. C made me immediately connect things back to our lovable yeah, AI Kane. ringleader Kane, yeah, the guy it, who's probably the most in control of this entire situation. And if you tend to see the name not Kane guy, he's an AI, he's not a guy. A in any sort of pop cultural reference, the first immediate jump is going to be to the biblical story of Cain and Abel. See, Cain and Abel were the children of Adam but and what Eve. What does this have to do with the actual? I mean, even if religion. it is, at the time I wasn't really like, what does that have sure to do? This was meant to be anything, or if it was going to lead with, anywhere. But the more I sat the and thought about like, it, the more I mean, even if it is the name of the company, to make. Eh, some of those connections were admittedly very dumb. For example, in biblical canon, Cain kills Abel and yep. becomes the first murderer. And what does Cain do multiple times throughout the pilot? He pops bubble for comedic effect. Ow! You parasite! Cain kills a bubble, a bull. What? Come on! Yes, 
single-handedly one of the dumbest things I've ever said in a theory, and I have said a lot of dumb things in theories. I didn't hear him say that, but like... All the parallels that I found as I was doing this little brain search through the episode again were a lot more compelling. In fact, some connections were so large that I believe I may have just cracked the question of what the digital circus is wide open. You see, loyal theorists, oh, okay. the amazing digital circus isn't just some mere video game that's trapped these consciousnesses. Wait, you just no, did a whole video on that. much darker. It's an eternity of torment and torture. The amazing digital circus is, quite literally, hell. Put on your headsets like and get your randomly hell? generated names, my friends, we're going in. So the claim that the digital circus what? is literally hell is a pretty bold one, so why would I possibly make it? Well, look at this. At the very okay. end of the pilot, here we're shown all the human characters sitting at a table while eating food. Yeah. But you notice anything weird about their dining arrangement? Of all the ways no. they could have set up this table, I mean, they decided to have every character on just one side. All of so? them facing the same direction. For the camera! At us, the audience. When this is done okay. in fiction, it's rarely by mistake. Because this right here, this is a very iconic framing device from one of the most famous paintings ever made, oh, The Last geez, here Supper we go. by Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci. Oh, this no. depicts the final meal of Jesus and his followers shared before yes. his crucifixion. It's been the okay. backbone of conspiracy theories and Dan Brown novels for centuries. Gooseworks, creator of the series, and all the other creatives over at Glitch, they're smart people. They wouldn't Fair be enough, using this imagery but... without understanding the historical baggage that comes along with it. And it's not just the table layout that's worth calling out here. Look at Pomni in the center, the exact position that Jesus is in for the painting. And wait. notice the colors oh, of Pomni. Oh no, I see Jax's blue. hand. Wouldn't it be weird if, oh wait, never mind, Jesus is also dressed in red and blue. Stop. The interpretation of his colors is that the blue Stop. represents the divine half of God, what heaven, and his red represents the blood, mankind. So in Jesus, you have the mixing of these two elements. Okay. God, born amongst men, and set to live as a human, red plus blue. And in Pomni, we actually have something similar, at least if our earlier theories were correct. But a creator all the of this game, are, a god oh, of this world, whoa, if you will, now set to live on. as a part of their own creation. And it's not like religion is completely absent from this world either, quite the contrary. We know for a fact that God exists in the circus in some form or another. During the first adventure that Cain sets up for Pomni, the Gloink Queen says this, yeah. I am Gloink, you will be Gloink's God will be Gloink's. What an oddly specific thing to say. Speaking of making oddly specific references mm. that we can build off of, let's talk about abstraction. Okay. According to the show, when you obsess yep. over being trapped in the circus and drive yeah, yourself you crazy abstract. looking for a way out, eventually you get to asking what the point of anything is, and you completely lose sight of who you are and why you're even alive, and when you reach your breaking point, something really terrible can happen. This is known as <laughs> abstraction, and we see the results of it when we meet Kofmo the Clown, or at least what's left of him. Oh! Kofmo's been abstracted! Last time, I wasn't really sure if we had enough to really make a judgment over what was happening here, but I did find some more information when digging through the creator Gooseworks' Tumblr. According to her, abstracting isn't just going crazy and becoming a big scary monster. It's definitely okay. part of it for sure, but there is a deeper meaning. According to Gooseworks, when you abstract, you lose everything about yourself. You're stripped of every single what? scrap of individuality like black, like that void. you become something unrecognizable. All abstracted people look the same. This glitchy four-legged monster covered in eyeballs. And perhaps most importantly, abstraction cannot be undone. Oh, now, can't be undone! The with this new oh, I did not know that. Imagery, the abstracted start resembling something else. Something beyond just monsters. They I almost thought maybe they like could be angels. resurrected. Well, uh, not really angels. More uh, biblically demons, accurate or? angels. What? Which, ironically enough, doesn't kidding? really come from the Bible. Let me explain. It's kind of confusing. Three years ago, a meme started spreading across the internet featuring these monstrous multi-eyed creations. They were called biblically accurate angels. What? Now, you might look at these things and go, really? Uh, no. They don't exactly look like the traditional image of an angel. Right. With robes and wings and halos and all that. But what they're riffing on here is a very specific part of the Bible. A few chapters in the book of Ezekiel where he describes having visions of winged creatures with four faces. Some human, some animal, and these creatures were joined by wheels within wheels with eyes. Here's a version of the quote. What? I looked and I saw beside the cherubim four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. Their entire bodies, including their backs, their hands, and their wings, were completely full of eyes, as were their four ah, wheels. So now, for weird. the sake of clarity, the wheels with eyes, or often in both are and aren't considered angels depending on what documents you're using and how you're classifying things. And again, all of this is based on a few very wow, short lines. Wow, this is going very so long, deep into biblical text. Tradition. I did not expect this at all. There. The point is that these religious entities are always described as having an abnormal number of eyes all over their bodies, just like the abstracted that we're seeing in Digital Circus. The weird descriptions even fit with the name abstract 
abstraction. These so-called biblically okay. accurate angels are weird, almost completely unrecognizable to humans because we can't comprehend what we're witnessing. They're, abstract, they're yeah. unknowable. In other words, they're abstract. abstract. Uh -huh. Now, while it's never made clear why these biblical creatures would have so many eyes, one persistent idea is that the design represents God's watchful eye over us. They're always watching us because God knows all. He sees mm -hmm. all. Look again at the digital circus. There's a yeah. ton of Even eyeball the imagery yeah. here. All throughout this first episode, eyes are hidden in the intro, they're hidden in paintings, they're hidden in the background. Kane even admits that he wants all the cast to stay in the circus. Where I can keep my hundreds of all-seeing eyes on you. Kane, so maybe he's God. Kane, an character who knows everything. A god of sorts. Yeah. And what's he made of? Basically a mouth and two big ol' eyes. Oh, and looking at Kane's dialogue through this more religious lens makes this line hit a whole lot different. Do you like adventure? Activity? Wonder? Danger? Or pain? Suffering? Agony? Death? Disease? Death? Angel food cake? Ow! Not only does suffering, agony, and death all sound very hellish, but why yeah. angel food cake? Like, why call out that Maybe he just likes angel. Here? I like angel food yeah, cake. We have ourselves a weird connection to angels no and religion. No way. Because, Come yeah, on. No. But the That's... most compelling reason for why we can draw parallels between this series and all these religious ideas angel is food the cake. way Are the creator you... Gooseworks talks about the digital circus. When asked if anyone in the series would be killed, Gooseworks answered that it depends on your definition of kill, which is likely well, pointing I mean, to Cosmo, the idea of yeah. abstraction. But it's interesting that she makes this distinction. It means that none of these characters can die, so to speak. They're trapped in here forever in eternal torment, just like hell. Yeah, Goose okay. also talks about how characters deserve to be there, specifically calling out Jax as the one who deserves to be there deserves. the most. Using the phrase deserves to be there, it shows that the circus is it's some punishment. place of judgment. It's either yeah. a reward for those who are good or a punishment for those yep. who are evil. And considering Gooseworks has a lot of negative things to say about Jax, this ain't your reward day at the spa. Time <laughs> <laughs> and time again, Gooseworks has gone on the record to say how awful Jax is. According to Gooseworks, but he's Jax funny. is morally like, the worst character in the show. It's true, so but it's so funny. When asked if he was more of a jerk or an anti-hero, she explained that, quote, there's absolutely nothing heroic about Jax. Those are some pretty strong words for a character that you yourself created. When another wow. fan commented that they hoped Jax was going to get worse, <laughs> Gooseworks said, you're probably going to enjoy some of the things we have planned. <laughs> and already the behavior that we've seen from him throughout the series is pretty awful. He's it mean, is. he trips people, he's knocks over, he steps on one of Gangle's masks without Karen. He knows that Ragatha's deepest fear is centipedes, and he uses and, yeah. that information to torture her. By the way, I may have left something in your room today, so let me know if you find it. Uh, you're not afraid of centipedes, are you? Jax! <laughs> That's literally my only fear. Why would you do this? Jax is clearly not a good person. So if Gooseworks is saying that he deserves to be in the circus more than most, then it clearly implies that we're trapped in hell. But just because they're in hell doesn't necessarily mean it has to be your typical fire and brimstone hell. Case in yeah, point, one fair. of the most influential depictions of hell comes from a play by French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre, known as We Clos, what? or translated into English, No Exit. In it, three no people exit. condemned to hell are brought into the same room and locked inside. But instead of a torture chamber, they just find a comfortably furnished room. <laughs> Not exactly what you'd expect, right? But as these three start but, talking yeah, and they, getting to they know each other, along. they realize they don't click. They yeah. annoy each other. They push each other's buttons and yep. they twist the knife until one yep. of them realizes this is the torture. A famous line from the play reads, hell is other people. That sounds exactly like what we see here in the digital circus. It's six people who don't necessarily click with one another. And but, no matter how polite I mean, they are, they all they're... still push each other's buttons. They exploit each other's I mean, fears and fake laughs. Jax does jokes. that to everyone, but part of all, there's and, no exit. I don't know. I Trapped feel, yeah, in a digital true. room with no escape. But now to the big question. What's okay. the point? It's all interesting for sure, but why bring up all these parallels? Well, yeah. if we can point to all these religious ideas to show what the digital circus is and how they're going to be using it in the story, we can also use them to point to where the story is headed. Specifically, I believe that we can use the religious imagery to get a pretty good idea of what Pomni's story arc is going to be. You see, Ooh. Pomni is Digital okay. Circus's parallel to Jesus Christ. I know oh, that okay. sounds insane. Hey, come on, man. Crazy enough for one of those Matt Pat out of context this compilations. Step, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I get it with the, with the Last Supper, but... actually stop and look at them. I mean, think back to come what on. I pointed out earlier about yeah, the Last Supper scene. Pompey is but... framed as the one in the center, exactly okay. where Jesus is yeah, sitting in the painting. Her color scheme matches Jesus's. His robes are split between two colors, red and blue, just like Pompey's jester outfit. Additionally, we have to consider Pompey's hand. About halfway through the episode when the abstracted Kaufmo attacks 
so Ragatha and makes her glitch, Hamni tries to help her right. and gets her hand glitched in the process. Yep. This plot line is actually left unresolved at the end of the episode, with Kane fixing Ragatha, but not Pomni, who keeps the glitching hand a secret. In Christianity, right. wounds or scars on your hand like this usually oh, reference stigmata. a very specific thing, stigmata. Yeah. These are representative of the wounds that Jesus got when he was being hammered onto the cross, usually depicted as scars on your hands. Another connection to Pomni. And <laughs> if our previous theory is correct and Pomni's human persona is an employee of the company behind the digital circus, well, she's the developer of this game. That would make I mean, her the creator. And just like Jesus is an aspect of well, God in many sects is, of Christianity, yeah, right. that would make Pomni an aspect of a yeah. god or creator of this world. Heck, her arc in the very first episode, forgetting who she is so that the information can be dramatically revealed to her later on, it even follows what Jesus went through in biblical texts, beginning life as a human before having to discover for himself that he right. is in fact the son, son of god. god, discovering yep. his purpose to save humanity from themselves. And this is why I think we have to care about all this. Why we started looking at all these religious parallels in the first place. If the digital circus is indeed designed to be hell, and everyone here is condemned to be there in some way, and Pomni suddenly comes in as a representative of Jesus, well she's there to, to save, save them. them. To help the yep. other cast members escape from this it. torment <laughs> I that they knew that's where you were going with this. Pomni's creation. But in the cruelest twist of fate, saving them is gonna doom Pomni. If I was a betting man, I'd say that Pomni will be the only one left in the digital circus after she's helped all, all the others to escape. Just like Jesus sacrificed Whoa. himself for humanity, Pomni is gonna do the same thing here. She's gonna one get by one behind, get them forever all out. tortured by this wacky AI going on his silly adventures. But it'll have been worth it because she'll manage to save everyone else. That is insane. He might be onto something. <laughs>